Hi, my name is Ron Sipsick, and this is the first of three videos on the case for free trade. Our objective in this first video is to explain the difference between the concepts of absolute advantage and comparative advantage. To simplify our analysis, we're going to assume that there are only two producers and two products. Let's assume that these two producers are gardeners, green thumb, and five thumbs. Each of these gardeners can grow tomatoes and corn. Green Thumb is the better gardener in both products because she can produce a bushel of corn or a bushel of tomatoes in less time. It only takes Green Thumb two hours to make a bushel of corn compared to six hours for Five Thumbs. It only takes Green Thumb three hours to make a bushel of tomatoes compared to 15 hours for Five Thumbs. The table shown illustrates the relationships. Green Thumb clearly has a, an advantage in resource cost. She uses fewer resources to produce the same amount of product of the same quality. This concept, being able to produce at a lower resource cost, is called absolute advantage. Let me repeat that again. Absolute advantage is being able to produce output at a lower resource cost. Now, many business people, many policy ma makers, even some academics believe that the resource cost is the true cost of product. But that is actually not the case. Labor is not employed to produce labor. Labor is employed to produce output. So when labor is devoted to corn, it's not devoted to tomatoes. The true cost of producing corn is not really the hours given up, but the amount of tomatoes given up by making corn. The true cost of making tomatoes is not really the hours given up to make tomatoes, but the corn that could have been produced with those hours. So in assessing the true cost of product, we need not focus on resources, rather we should focus on what is called opportunity cost. Earlier in our studies of economics, we looked at the concept of opportunity cost and said that it is the value, opportunity cost is the value of what is given up when a choice is made. So the true cost of making corn is the value of tomatoes given up. And the true cost of making tomatoes is the value of the corn given up. So the table we've been given to begin the problem actually does not really help us much in understanding true cost. We're going to need to adjust the data and get corn into tomatoes and tomatoes into corn. So we're going to set up a worksheet for doing that. I'm going to change the type uh, color type here to get us started and we'll set up a worksheet and we'll use the data from our resource table. Green thumb will be on the left here, five thumb will be on the right. We'll take the data from that table, one corn equals two hours for green thumb, one tomato equals three hours, one corn equals six hours for five thumb, one tomato equals 15 hours. Notice that we have three, variable, or three variables but two equations for each producer. And so we're going to need to do some algebraic manipulation and some simple math to get corn into tomatoes, to get tomatoes into corn, and to remove hours from the equations. The easiest way to attack this is to isolate hours and then substitute them out of the equation. So we'll divide this by two Divide this by 2. By doing that, we actually get 1 hour equals 1 half corn. We'll divide this side by 3, this side by 3. Again, we've isolated hours. 1 hour equals 1 third tomato. If two things are equal to the same thing, then they must be equal to each other. So 1 half C equals 1 third T. And now we have corn expressed in tomatoes. We do, however, have a rather unwieldy equation. So we can simplify this and should simplify it. So let's multiply this side by 2 over 1, which means we need to multiply this side of the equation by 2 over 1. 
multiplying our fractions numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, we get 2 over 2 corn, which is 1 corn, equals 2 thirds tomatoes. And if we multiplied through by 3, we could solve for tomatoes. One tomato equals three halves corn. Now again, this, these expressions are rather awkward. Many people are not comfortable today with fractions. So we will convert these to decimals. One corn equals 0.67 tomatoes, realizing that two thirds is really 0.66666. We'll round it off to two decimal places. And then one tomato equals three halves corn. We could convert that to one tomato equals 1.5 corn. Now we have corn in terms of tomatoes, and we have tomatoes in terms of corn. These numbers on the right constitute the true cost of making a unit of corn or making a unit of tomatoes. We're going to do now the same thing for five thumb. So we scroll back up. We're going to divide this side by 6, divide this side by 6. The 6s cancel here. 1, one H equals 1, 6 C for 5 thumb. Divide this side by 15, divide this side by 15. Again, these cancel. 1 H equals 1 15th T. So if two things are equal to the same thing, they must be equal to each other. 1 6 C equals 1 15th T. Again, this is an unwieldy equation, so we can simplify this. Multiply this side by 6 over 1. Multiply this side by 6 over 1. We get 1 C equals 6 15th T. If we were to multiply through by 15 instead of by 6, we could solve for T. 1t equals 15 over 6c. And again, these are at least hard to look at. Most people aren't used to looking at fractions today. Most people like decimals, so we can convert these to decimals rather quickly. 1c equals 0.40t. 1t equals 2.5c. Now, something very interesting has occurred here. When we look at resources, it looks like Green Thumb is better at both products, and she is, but it looks like she wouldn't have any incentive to want to cooperate with Five Thumb. In other words, she would make both products and keep what she needs. However, when we convert from resource cost to opportunity cost, we see something here very different. Notice that to make a corn, it costs green thumb 0.67 tomatoes. But to make but when we look at five thumb to make when five thumb makes a unit of corn, it costs five thumb 0 0.40 tomatoes. So actually five thumb produces corn at a lower opportunity cost. Very, very interesting. Let me change my color here again. We'll switch it. Now we'll look at tomatoes. When it comes to tomatoes, green thumb can produce a tomato for 1.5 corn, whereas five thumb takes 2.5 corn to make a tomato. Now again, we're assuming corn and tomatoes of equal quality here. So actually, green thumb produces tomatoes at the lower opportunity cost. In other words, she has what is called the comparative advantage. In fact, why don't I write that out right now? So you have that definition. Go back here. Whoop, we've scroll down too far so let me apologize here for the technical difficulties so let's go back to our black and what is comparative advantage comparative advantage is producing the product at the lower opportunity cost. So although Green Thumb 
has the absolute advantage in both products. She only has the comparative advantage in tomatoes. Although Five Thumb does not have the absolute advantage in either product, really has an absolute disadvantage, he has the comparative advantage in corn. So we'll learn later on that if they specialize and trade along the lines of their comparative advantage, they're both going to find themselves better off by trading rather than trying to be self-sufficient. Now let's take this data that we've calculated and put it into a new table. A table where we're not measuring resource cost, but we're measuring opportunity cost. And this table will serve as the foundation for much of the work we're going to do later on. So we'll put green thumb in this column, five thumb in this column, one corn in the first row, one tomato in the second row as we did earlier. Instead of putting hours in here, we're going to put opportunity cost, the cost of one product in terms of the other. To produce a unit of corn, it costs green thumb 0.67 tomatoes. To produce a unit of corn, it costs five thumb 0.40 tomatoes. Five thumb has the comparative advantage, can produce at the lower opportunity cost. One tomato costs green thumb 1.5 corn. One tomato costs five thumb 2.5 corn. Green thumb has the comparative advantage in tomatoes. And again, we're going to learn later on that if they specialize and trade along the lines of the comparative advantage, in other words, if Five Thumb produces and sells corn and Green Thumb buys corn from Five Thumb, and then if Green Thumb specializes and trades in tomatoes, in other words, is the seller of tomatoes, whereas Five Thumb will buy his tomatoes from her, in the end, they will both be made better off by cooperating in this way. So the key point here is that producers should not try to specialize in the products they have an absolute advantage in. They should try to specialize in the products they have a comparative advantage in.